Okay, here we go. Got a small little little fur log. So you can see it's not real big. Goes up there a ways, but it's nice, easy to get right across the road. We're gonna give her a jerk. See if we can't pull her down. If you look up there, I don't know if you'll be able to see in this, but it goes up there a little bit. It might get hung up. We might have to cut a little bit so it can slide down, but we'll give this a try first. So what we got going right here, so I just used a strap, and if you can see, it's hooked with a shackle right there, but then I put a wrap on it, and that'll make it roll this direction, which is where the truck is. Then we got her hooked up right there. So I'll, I'll roll down, bring a little tension, then I'll just pop it just a little bit to get it moving. And then once it moves, I'll punch it, and all goes well. It'll swing right around, lay right down here beside the road. And if you take a look, set her right down here. Now we got some easy work to do. So I'll uh, cue you back in in a little bit. Okay, so that uh, tree there may not seem it, but it was uh, 18 inches on the butt, and it's about what was it 10 inches on the top there or no, it was 18 on the butt eight on the top when i taped it and out of curiosity i measured it and it was 65 feet long so you know there's a decent amount of wood in there we'll uh have a better idea once we get her loaded up but instead of fighting your way up and down that hill up and down that hill to me it sure as heck works better to uh pull it down here and now it's stretched out right along the road, we'll cut it up, and we can just back it up as we're filling it up. We'll be good to go. Now I just recently replaced the uh, carburetor and coil on this thing. So I've been just slowly fine-tuning the carburetor. Seems to run pretty good. You use the cap set the... Uh, high-end RPM but uh, so I, I'm not over RPM and you know I'm not going too high I'm not gonna blow it up just playing with the low end getting the idle just right I thought about switching to my 25 inch bar for this but 32 is on there so I'll just use it the other thing I could have used was my little 180 steel but uh, it's handy for limbing stuff up and doing stuff, but this much cutting, I would just as soon use the big steel here. And as you can see, I need to play with the idle a little more. But.
will uh, move you guys up here and I think I'll play with this idle just a touch here. We'll uh, set you guys there and let you have that view.
You can see we got quite a bit more of it. Pain in the butt is up here where I live. See that right there? It just looks like dirt. But a lot of our dirt up here is full of pumice from uh, when St. Helens blew. So that is ridiculously hard on your chain. So I might have to touch it up when I fuel it up. We'll see. It's. Uh, Got an okay, so I'm not super happy with it, but some of these cuts are slower because um, you don't really realize it. It's hard to tell till you've cut it off, but see like uh, this one right there. 
cut right through four knots and you definitely notice the difference when you're cutting through knots so but all in all it's going pretty good got a little bit of cutting left uh, I think it'll be a good a good little shot of firewood because could get about 65 blocks or so out of it so yeah so it's all cut up now the uh, real work starts <clears throat> There we go, three little piles to back up a couple times and have her loaded up. Now, I thought I'd point this out, this wood might fill it up, but even if I was only getting three quarters of a load, I always stack my first three rows really, really tall. But if you look, there's my axle. So my third row here, you know, and if I was cutting it 15, 16, like I do sometimes, that'd be back in here. But on this 12 inch, which is what I burn, I could even do four rows. Really, really tall, because once you get behind your rear axle, then it gives leverage on your suspension. So you want all your weight, the, the majority of the weight, if possible, to be in front of the axle. So... Okay, here we are on the second pile. So the wood's a little bit bigger. So yeah.
Let's try and get this. I've been working on this flick technique. See if we can do this without breaking the camera. So the idea is it hits and flips. There we go, that last one got it. Just saves your axe out a little bit. something you know when these boxes flipped up here so I want to split these but you want to save your axe out so you want to just give it a touch of thought like uh, right here I usually start but if you see the angle I'm not hitting like that I'm, I'm making sure to hit up at an angle like this so I don't beat up my axe then as you work through See how the axe went through rather than the handle hitting. Like if I want to reach out and get this block here, say, you know, I can do it. Just got to be careful. Obviously, woods that switch harder, you can't get this uh, technique to work for you, but, you know, this is the wood we got around here, dug for a burn's pretty good. I'll go through. Pop them in half. There we go, we're all loaded up, so this load came in just a little short of a cord, I'd say three quarters, maybe a little over, but 